if there's one video you watch of ours this year, watch this one. The past few months have been absolutely uh, incredible and game-changing and really enlightening with how wrong isn't the right word, but misunderstood I was about what this machine is uh, for us and for anyone out there who loves manufacturing, machining, entrepreneurship, small business, all that stuff. It, it has been incredible and I want to kind of share why I was wrong and what this machine is to us now. Uh, and I'll start with kind of a funny quote, which is the average person thinks they're not. Um, I, I love what I do and I thought we could keep doing what we do as well as we do it with a lot of vertical machines. And we've had really good luck and success implementing them. And I know, I talked to you guys, I know there are so many people out there um, that do this and that's a totally a natural progression. You know, we started with a tag, <laughs> a tag in my bench top new, uh, apartment and moved to a Tormach and bought verticals and it's been really, it's been absolutely great. But uh, I went into fur detail uh, in a video a couple weeks ago about, you know, kind of why we bought this machine. So you can go watch that video if you want to see more about what led me to realize, holy cow, uh, we need to up our ability to produce. Um, but you know, it's funny, I just never thought I was the kind of guy who would be excited about a horizontal. Uh, they kind of seemed like dinosaurs or the type of machine that just is boring and cranks out tens of thousands of parts. And, and really, I couldn't have been more wrong. Um, this machine gives us the ability to produce the quantities we need at the capacity we need with this sort of just-in-time manufacturing that is just exquisite. Um, but I want to start off with, with the kind of the first thing that hit me on this machine, which is uh, I thought we were buying a, a machine, kind of a spindle, a machine, etc. And as soon as I started running it, uh, within the first week, and we'll talk about what that was like to kind of onboard this machine and get the first programs running, because um, I've heard different experiences and we had a really good one here, but um, it, it occurred to me though within the first week, this is at least two machines, because we got our first tombstone right there set up, we got our second tombstone set up, which is right in there, and then I realized I don't even have to run it during the day. While I'm here at the shop, I have a totally free machine to do whatever I need to do because when four o'clock runs around or whatever time you leave, you can hit cycle start and it's gonna run and do all the work that it needs to do overnight. So that was kind of like mind blowing because I realized, wait a minute here, the same machine that I need to build fixtures for and parts for uh, to get it up and running, I can use to do that with no hassle, no stress. Um, but to take that one step further, and I recognize there's some limitations to what I'm about to say, but you can almost multiply that by six, because we bought, and I would never do it another way, uh, a six station pallet pool. And what that means, or think about it, if you're running a vertical, think about having a vertical machining center that was free all day long when you're at the shop to do whatever you needed to do with it, but it still made money for you, it made parts for you every night. And think about being able to hit a button, one, two, three, four, five, six, where it would immediately swap out all of your work holding, all your fixturing, all your setups immediately with no hassle, no stress. You could go from jaws to big plate work to uh, us with the, having the higher density dual station mod vices. Like, it's just incredible. Um, so I know I'm getting a little excited, but seriously, it's been incredible in that capacity. Um, I, I really didn't appreciate how uh, amazing this machine would be. And if you're ever thinking about this uh, as part of your journey, I would say this. What we bought, which is a six pallet pool machine with a 218 tool matrix, is not the same class, not the same zip code, nothing as your traditional horizontal, where you've just got a two pallet swapper with a more normal sized ATC. Um, I don't, would never go so far as to say that it's a mistake to buy one of those, but I would challenge as to why. I've had this conversation now with many people. Sometimes it's capital constraints, sometimes it's space constraints, but uh, neither one of those are valid for me. Like, it's just a different capability, a different platform uh, for us to have that functionality. Uh, I knew we wanted the six pallet pull from the get-go. I didn't have as much conviction about the size of the ATC. Uh, we knew we wanted the matrix, but having the 218 was, kind of happenstance based on the inventory levels. I think the one I was gonna go for was like 160. Uh, so perhaps you could argue not a huge difference, but nevertheless, that has been absolute game changer. And so last year we toured Area 419, awesome story, awesome company, really inspiring. And they had brought on a bunch of machines, including a DMG Mori NHX 5000, I think. And John, the owner who I very much you know look up to and think he's, he's very, um, 
you know, kind of one of those guys when he talks, you listen, said, boy, it really kicked their butt how hard and how long and how much work it was to get their horizontal online. So I kind of was bracing for that. So we pulled our Fusion 360 cam, our tools, and even some of our, kind of some of our fixtures, um, like for instance, the mod vice or the reversible insert fixture, which is right there. We were running it in a vertical on just directly on a fixture plate. So we were basically able to set up tools or touch off tools. We didn't even take, change them out of their holders in this machine and swap the post processor, uh, shameless plug to the post processor video we did, uh, mods we had to do to get this working. But we were up and running within a couple of days. I know John, I think he was programming new parts, new fixtures, and uh, in the gotcha bucket, their horizontal, the Y axis, which is up and down this way, does not reach very far down. Like they have a, I don't know, an inch or two gap down here. Our Y axis will travel to just about the bottom edge of this chamfer. Um, so what that meant was they were building some fixtures. I think they probably already had them designed where they realized they couldn't machine the fixtures or the tombstones in the machine. So they had to move all those over to a vertical, do that work and move them back. So that's for sure a, a lot of work. Um, so we've only been running two parts, the top jaws, which are run on this tombstone right here. We've got one of our fixture plates, a bunch of dual station mod vices. This handles op one, and then we move them over here to op two. Uh, we're actually, uh, don't tell fifth axis, we're using their stuff on a four axis machine. Um, but no, we, we threw this on, and it's actually been great for some uh, fixtures and uh, spacers and stuff we've made. We wanted to space this guy off the edge, and um, so it's been good to have that. We might end up duplicating this setup here on the other side to double the quantity of top jaws um, because it, ultimately you are going to reach some bottleneck. I recognize that. Um, if you need to produce more than you can run from 4 p.m. when you leave till 8 a.m. when you get in or whatever your hours are, then yeah, maybe this machine does have to run some production work during the day. But I think for a lot of the kind of growth style uh, growing into one of these, what I said remains true that you can have it as the machine that you get to use and play with during the day and then have it go do work at night. Um, we have a third tombstone. I honestly haven't gotten around to finishing it. Uh, it's that guy right in there. It's going to run our uh, aluminum pallets, which we've had a hard time keeping in stock. Um, we have mostly have dedicated setups on our verticals, but even with that, this machine is just so much more capable. Uh, and again, it just makes me excited that it runs uh, after hours. It's, it's totally detached the presence of people and labor here from our ability to make chips, which is really cool. Okay, so what have been the tougher lessons to learn? Uh, one is that it's really weird to manage tool life because this thing does most of the work when no one's paying attention to it, either during the day or at night. So usually we rely on noise or um, you know, sound or sometimes the looks of uh, end mill to know if it needs replaced or inserts or whatever. You have no idea. So it actually does take, uh, or you can spend a fair amount of time going through and looking at tools. And we started making lists of the tools that we know are more common to, to uh, that need to get checked and so forth. And of course you can check the part itself, but um, you know, one of the scary things about these things is you can make a lot of bad parts quickly. So I don't wanna wait to see things I don't like on my parts for surface finish or tolerance to know that I need to go check a tool. It's been such a good experience that I've also kind of put off doing some housekeeping stuff on this machine. I need to get a better uh, comfort level at managing tools from the matrix. Um, the problem, which I'll figure out, is that our post-processor pre-stages every tool, which is great, but that means it has a tool um, up, actually, let's open the door. Um, it has a tool right up next to the door ready for the next operation, which is stopping me from being able to use this control right here to pull up another tool, take a look at it, change the inserts, put it back, etc. cetera. Um, I'll figure that out, um, but that'll help us be able to uh, do that stuff while it's running during the day. The other thing is, again, it was a major installation. Um, all of the pedestals are independently anchored down to the ground. Uh, so to say the least, this machine's not going to be easily moved ever. Uh, it requires 200 amps at 208. That's a lot of power. Uh, and it was pretty expensive to have that service installed or the breaker and sub panel run for it. And it was, took two weeks to install it. Um, and I thought maybe they were padding that. They were really here for two weeks. 
So it's no no joke. I wouldn't undo any of that, but um, it is noteworthy. You know, verticals are like a day. I'd also always believed the statement that horizontals are inherently a lot more rigid that compared to like a C-frame machine, because on a C-frame machine you have your base, your column, and then the Z overhang, so it's got this extra sort of kinematic axis. I don't know if that's untrue, but what I will say, we haven't seen any issues yet, but tombstones are not perfectly rigid. So it is true that you're going to have more potential to have deflection uh, or something all the way at the top of your tombstone, again, depending on how that's designed, then all the way down here at the bottom. And I suspect some of the origins of that phrase about horizontals being so much more rigid might stem back to old school manual, like the K&T number two machines, where they really were an incredibly stout kinematic loop. You didn't have a tombstone sticking up 25 to 30 inches. It's been an adjustment also getting used to regularly running machines well into the after hours. So two things I've done that are easy for now is I have a webcam that we just set right here that lets me quickly check the status of the machine remotely. So if I need to hop over to the shop, uh, I can. Um, I don't want to have to do that. So the other thing that we did is I don't want our compressors to necessarily be cycling all night, especially if we are, we're done for the night. So I bought some uh, 110 volt ball valve. So I didn't want solenoids. The one thing to me about a solenoid is it's gonna fail, especially since a solenoid needs to be magnetized either for it to have it, hold it open or closed. I just wanted a ball valve. So the only time you needed power was to turn it one way or the other. And so we hooked these into Alexa smart plugs uh, and we have one on each compressor. So I have a routine or I can go into the Alexa app myself and actually shut off the ball valve, which is really cool. Um, the uh, solid, we'll put a link to these in the description. The ball valves are also really cool because they have a capacitor in them and they're designed to fail open. So literally if, you un if it's closed and you unplug it, it will actually use the voltage remaining or power remaining in the capacitor to give you one last open. So worst case, again, we just unplug it and we'll have air in our shop. Next up though is we're continuing to move more parts over to it. For that, we need more tombstones. I'm literally waiting for one more part to finish building the one that's in there. And then we need three more tombstones. And the thing I don't like about the ones that we bought, number one, they're cast iron, which is just absolutely hor horrible and disgusting to cut in this machine. And I really don't want to contaminate our coolant with it. Um, they're pretty expensive and freight shipping these days is also really expensive. So, um, oh, and finally, they don't have the size I really want. And remember how I mentioned our Y-axis travel goes down to about right here. I actually want to have a fixture it goes below that so I can have some work holding down here outside of my work envelope and actually have a, some tools come on and literally squeeze every quarter inch um, of travel out of the Y axis on this machine. So I did some thinking on it and I realized we can do this. So what you're looking at is what's about to become our first in-house tombstone. Uh, and in fact, in the video when we were talking about buying this machine, I readily admitted, you know, DIY could be a mistake, buy the stuff that's out there, get rock and rolling. That was a good choice. We've made a lot of parts. I'm glad that that's running and I've got the confidence to have made the parts I've made on that machine to date. But now, uh, this is the next project. We will have a full blown video on this, but what you're looking at, um, we'll have fasteners on the inside to serve as anchors. This large center hole gets that uh, concrete form tube. And then the, the difference, the, the area basically around in here, including the half of one, two, three blocks, we will be pouring a, uh, an epoxy mix. So it's like what you see on the Langmuir machines or other uh, machines that use that epoxy granite or epoxy mineral casting type pour. So it's a combination of play sand, limestone, and that's some of the epoxy. If you do this correctly, it's supposed to offer a significant amount of dampening ability to it. We'll be able to use all threads to clamp it straight down to the Akuma pallet basis, which will be awesome. Um, and it gives me the size that I want. Here's the uh, sample we just made last week. Alex said he is uh, really happy with it too. So like I said, we will do a full blown video uh, on that, whether it goes well or it doesn't go well. I'm pretty confident in it. I've also talked to some folks that have made effectively similar aluminum uh, tombstones without much in the way of structural uh, epoxy or equivalent fills. So I think it'll be totally fine, especially the parts I need to run in it aren't gonna take a ton of, uh, of rigidity, if you will. So um, 
it, it'll work out at least for one, but if it goes really well, we'll plan on making two more like that. And you know, these tombstones delivered are usually, you know, they're over $3,000 when you add in freight. Um, this one with all the supplies will probably be around $1,000. And frankly, that really just includes the fact that aluminum like doubled in the last you know, three months. If, if aluminum prices were like they were last year, this thing would probably be $700 or so. I know the folks that follow the podcast know I give Grimsmo a hard time on, on doing uh, DIY projects that one shouldn't, but uh, this one I'm good with. It's, uh, it's gonna be, it's a good fit. We, we make fixture plates. Like most of the parts that we were uh, machine on that, we were already set up to do. Uh, and Alex has done a, his own DIY machine with that epoxy granite stuff. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But seriously, folks, I, I really love what I do. I thought we would be able to grow this business more and you know you could make fun of me by saying wow all of a sudden saunders realizes how great automation is but some, <laughs> that's part of the story um i i really can't tell you how amazing this was uh or has been to bring online and how absolutely capable it is so as always folks thanks for following along i appreciate it um looking forward hopefully see some folks at imts this year or other events and yeah take care we'll see you soon